Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Julie, keeper of my home. This is week two of the Three Rivers Pantry Challenge. If you're new here, Jessica over at Three Rivers Homestead is doing a pantry challenge. Now she does this every year. This is her fourth year, I believe she said, fifth year for her, fourth year that she's done it outside of her own home, you know, with others. And I have chosen to do this as well for our home. So we're doing it the month of January and February. We are eating from our own food stores. We are eating directly from what we have here at home in our pantry, our larder, our uh, root cellar, freezer, whatever we have here, leftovers, whatever it is, we're shopping our own home for our meals for the months of January and February. If you choose to do this, you can make up your own rules because there are no real rules. It's just whatever fits you and your family. So this is, like I said, our second week. And I'm gonna do it a little bit different. <laughs> I'm tweaking as we go. I've never had to do a whole week's full of meals, so this is gonna be a little different for me. Um, week one was a little harried and crazy. Week two, I think our life is just crazy. Anyway, I'm beginning to realize that. But what I'm going to do is show more of our meals and how we make them. I thought that would be a little uh, fun for you and you can get some recipes along the way. I'll do some voiceovers and any place that I do not have a meal recorded, I'm sure there's a couple, what I'll do is you'll just see my face back on here and I'll go over that with you this way. So let's get started. We are going to begin on Saturday night, the 8th of January, and continue through. Today is actually Saturday for us. You will be seeing this on Sunday. Um, I don't know currently what we're going to have for dinner tonight, so what I'll do is I'll cover that on the next week as well. That'll make it easier. So let's dive right in so you can get some great recipes and maybe a little inspiration along the way. We have some roasted root vegetables and some summer squash zucchini. It's, uh, let's see, carrots, sweet potatoes, summer squash, zucchini, and onions. And got a little like garlic powder, onion powder, salt, pepper, and um, some parm. And then we have some pork chops that have been browned in cast iron, some beets, from some the vegetables we had canned from last summer. And we also have some leftover potato salad. And today is Saturday, January 8th. Today is Sunday, January 9th, and we're having meatloaf. Now you'll see I skipped over breakfast because I can't find that footage. We did have a breakfast sandwich and some fruit. But for dinner tonight, we have some broccoli that is fresh in our um, storage refrigerator in our basement. Uh, we had some leftover. I can't believe that it lasted, but it did. So we're going to use that before our luck runs out and it turns bad. And this is meatloaf that my husband makes. It's his recipe. Uh, it's a little bit different today because he's using moose meat. This is some moose meat that someone had given us and we had it in our freezer and thought it's a great time to use it. So when he makes his meatloaf, he uses a few breadcrumbs and some chopped onions. This is just some bread that we had left over, some homemade brown bread. Whatever breadcrumb you have, it's fine to use. And a farm fresh egg. He always binds it with an egg. And for us, we do have chickens, so it's usually farm fresh. So he's just going to um, get this mixed in, and he likes to mix in between everything that he adds. So along with the onion and the breadcrumbs, he is also adding some bacon bits. Now this bacon is left over from breakfast. It was a few pieces, I just chopped them up and he threw them in. He's also going to add some Parmesan cheese and he has a little um, dish. You can see the dish. Uh, it's a ketchup mix 
and what is in there is a little bit of ketchup a little bit of dry mustard powder and some brown sugar salt pepper garlic powder and onion powder no real measurement he just puts it in to taste and he mixes that in with the hamburger as he makes it then he's going to put it in a small cast iron pan now this is a lot smaller than he usually makes he usually puts it in a loaf pan and he puts half down then layers cheese and then puts the other half on top of that and bakes it that way once in a while he'll put bacon over the top he is really a great cook let me tell you so he's reserved some of the sauce mix and he's going to spread that over the top and sprinkle with I, I don't I don't remember if he sprinkled it with cheese or not no he didn't he will do that when it comes out I think but we're gonna cook it in the cook stove along with that we have some carrots that he's peeling these are some I'm sorry they are not carrots these are potatoes these are some red potatoes that we had in our basement and he's going to just boil these because we're gonna make them into whipped potatoes and you can see here we've got the broccoli that I had chopped up so that's on here and while that's all cooking I'm going to make some dessert this is a peach cobbler and I'm using two jars of our pe peaches that I had canned last year so we're gonna put those drain them and I'm keeping all of that liquid never throw that away that stuff is so good you can use it in smoothies you can use it in other recipes there's so many places you can put that juice and put it to good use it's just you just don't want to throw it away so I'm gonna to toss that either into the refrigerator or the freezer in the peaches I am going to add two teaspoons of cinnamon two tablespoons of flour and three tablespoons of butter the recipe does call for a third cup of either honey maple syrup or brown sugar but the canned peaches are already sweetened so I did not add any additional sugar to this I'm going to stir this all around get it mixed in well and then I'm just going to put it in the cook stove just for long enough for the butter to melt I'm actually passing that to Joe and he's putting it in the cook stove while that is in there melting I am going to work on the top part of our cobbler this is a sourdough and you start initially you start the dough by soaking the grains the night before in a bowl so the night before you combine two cups of flour I used einkorn you can use the flour of your choice then you add a half a cup of sourdough starter one third cup of melted coconut oil and one quarter cup of honey and you mix that well you form it into a dough and you let it sit all night long letting it sit allows the grains to ferment which makes it actually easier for your stomach to digest now to this mixture once it has set for 8 to 24 hours you are going to add one teaspoon of baking soda one teaspoon of baking powder one quarter teaspoon of cinnamon half teaspoon of salt and half a cup of cream to the mixture I did not use cream I didn't have any I did use buttermilk and it worked out fine mix that all really good with your hands because they're the best tool in your kitchen and then you're gonna add a quarter cup of brown sugar mix that again the dough is going to be a wet dough you're going to put it out onto a floured board once it's all mixed in well and you're just going to press it out to about a half an inch thick and cut out some biscuits if you've never used einkorn flour I would encourage you to give it a try it has the best nutty flavor my husband I've had einkorn flour for a while and my husband has kind of I don't know he's kind of rebelled against it and trying it and I thought well maybe this would be the time I could get him to try it he's just not really great at changing really basic things that he's used to so I did use the einkorn and he loved it he absolutely loved it he actually has requested that I not make it any other way now 
because it just has a wonderful nutty flavor. It's a delicious flour to use. Once you are finished cutting out your biscuits, you want to place them on top of the peaches. And I am going to have a couple biscuits left over, but you keep watching and you'll see what I do with those. Right now, I'm going to put this into the cook stove. If you do not have a cook stove, which I'm guessing most don't, put it at, uh, you can bake it at 350 in a regular oven. Now, the rest of those biscuits, well, why not make an apple cobbler to go along with the peach cobbler? I mean, we don't have to eat it all tonight, but I can put it away for another night. So these are just some apples chopped up and we just added some apple pie spice and a little bit of extra cinnamon, a little bit of flour and a little bit of sugar. Just stirred it all up, put them in a couple of little dishes. I am a dish fan. You will see I love little dishes. Um, I don't know what it is about them, but I just, I like little individual serving size dishes. And these are a couple that I'd found at Goodwill and I, they, I don't know. They just make me happy whenever I see them. I like them. So I just poured over the apples into those and I'm going to place the biscuits on top and wrap them up and put them in the refrigerator to be cooked at a later time. Now, I did add something to these before I cooked them, but I don't think I showed it in this video. But we have some homemade crayon apple juice, and I poured that in with the apples, and I let it sit and just soak up those flavors while it was in the refrigerator. And, oh my gosh, I'm telling you, that was the best thing that I could have ever done. It was delicious. To go along with our dinner tonight, we are having whipped potatoes. My husband just mashed the potatoes that he cooked, added a little bit of butter, uh, whipped those up with the beaters, added a little bit of milk to that, uh, salt, pepper, and now dinner is served. It was delicious. Everything was absolutely delicious. One of my favorite meals, and to be totally honest, I'm not a meatloaf fan, but this really was very tasty. And dessert? Well, dessert was definitely the best part, but for me it always is. I'd love to know if you try this recipe. I don't think you'll be disappointed if you do. So leave me a comment below and let me know. Monday, January 10. We roasted a chicken with fresh carrots from our garden. Now our carrots, we last year canned them and this year decided to keep them fresh. So we have been storing them in our spare refrigerator in the basement. So it's been really nice to have fresh carrots whenever we like to have carrots. So um, they're delicious and I'm so glad my husband convinced me to do it this way. The onions are also from our garden and um, I, I love that we've planted this stuff, the stuff that we're eating. I mean, we've, we've grown. So I, I love that. So we are using onions, carrots, potatoes, and we are just, I'm just putting those in the pan. I like to put the chicken on top of the vegetables. So I usually put it up on top of the carrots to kind of give it a little bit of lift. And then all those juices go down into the vegetables and everything is so yummy. My husband loves to season things, so he's got his mixture of seasonings on there. That will cook slowly in our cook stove. And while that is cooking, I have some butter and garlic on the stove that I've melted together. And I'm going to make some sourdough naan bread. This is my sourdough starter. It is about three years old. I'm going to use one cup of the starter. I just fed it probably a couple hours before this, so it's nice and frothy. To the starter, I am going to add two cups of all-purpose flour, a teaspoon of salt, and a half a cup of milk or water. You can use water if you don't have milk. That's totally fine. I'm also going to be adding just a little bit of the garlic butter that I had melted on the stove. 
Now that's just to give it a little bit of a garlic flavor. We love garlic and the garlic that we used here is actually garlic we grew in our garden this year. You do not have to add that to your recipe if you are not a garlic fan. Uh, you can definitely do it just like this or feel free to add herbs to this. I mean, different herbs, experiment with maybe some garlic and rosemary or just the rosemary or rosemary and thyme. I think all of it would be really delicious and a great addition, just a, a different flavor to your bread. I love experimenting with different herbs. Now I'm going to knead this a little bit and then cut it into eight pieces. Um, try to get it into as even, you know, even eight pieces as you can, but you want to roll those out into flat quarter inch um, bread pieces, you know, just like a pancake. And I'm going to fry those in cast iron, on cast iron, um, with a little bit of olive oil in the pan. Once I flip it the first time, I'm going to brush it with some butter and some garlic that I had pan fried and this is just going to give it a little bit more flavor. I, I love that infused garlicky butter flavor on there and it just makes it delicious. It also smokes up your house as you can see. We had that smoke everywhere. It's definitely the worst part of frying anything. This was a delicious meal. I hope you try it. And please try the bread because it was really amazing. I think you'll like it. Now for dessert. Remember the apple cobbler that we put away in the refrigerator for later? Well, we cooked that up and oh my goodness, this was so delicious. I don't know, it might have that peach cobbler beat. It was so wonderful. The juices that were in there from the juice that we put in there, the apples soaked that all up and with the cranberry flavor, oh my gosh, this was amazing. We are at Tuesday, January 11. So I'm on here because for some reason that didn't get recorded. But for breakfast, we had leftover sourdough blueberry pancakes. And for dinner that evening, we just had leftover meatloaf and potatoes and vegetables. Now you'll notice that we are, I'm not showing lunches. We really don't eat a lot of lunches. I think I have two this week that I will show you, um, or at least tell you that we had. <laughs> I don't know if I have pictures for both, but, um, so I'm, I'm just gonna kind of focus on breakfast and dinner with our meals, and I hope you're enjoying getting the recipes to a lot of these meals. And uh, I'd love to hear below in the comment section if you're trying them, so let me know. Right now, we're gonna move on to Wednesday. Breakfast on Wednesday, January 12th, muffin, homemade apple cranberry juice, and a cup of tea. So I didn't think that I was going to do lunches, but this is a lunch with just a mishmash of stuff on it. We have some leftover naan bread that I made earlier in the week. We have some roasted vegetables. All of this stuff is complete leftovers. We have broccoli, we have a pork pie, and um, some beets and some meatloaf. So that's all it is today. For dinner this evening, we are having a chicken stew. Now this is being made with our leftover chicken. We have the chicken, we have the onions that were in with the chicken, the carrots, the potatoes, all of that. And it's already been pre-seasoned, but we're gonna add a little bit more and we're going to use my homemade bone broth with this. And here are the carrots that were left over in the roast. We're going to cut those up. We're also going to use a few dehydrated carrots, also using some dehydrated celery and sage, thyme, and other seasonings that were from our garden. These are all great to add to a chicken stew. And I'm also going to use leftover vegetables that need to be used up. A stew is always a great way to use up any leftover vegetables and things that you have in your refrigerator. 
Joe's also cutting up a few potatoes because there wasn't quite enough left over with the roasted chicken. Earlier in the day, I made some homemade brown bread. So we're going to have that with dinner. It was delicious. Everything tasted wonderful and the house smelled amazing. Thursday, January 13, and this is breakfast. Breakfast sandwich is just um, eggs and toast. It's homemade brown bread, an orange, and tea. And don't throw out those orange slices because we're going to make those into a homemade cleaner. So just save everything, waste not, want not. Thursday, January 13, and Dinner tonight is leftover chicken stew, uh, some toast, homemade brown bread, a cup of tea, that's for me, and Joe is having leftover ham and potato scallop casserole. We had that, I think it was the last week in December and we froze it in serving sizes what we hadn't eaten, so he pulled that out of the freezer and heated that up, and also some toast. Friday, January 14. I'm making sourdough English muffins. The recipe belongs to Lisa Bass from Farmhouse on Boone. These are delicious and they make great breakfast sandwiches, which is what I'm going to do with them this morning. I will leave a link to her recipe in my description box below if you are interested in it. Um, the only thing I do different is where she adds honey, I use maple syrup. Other than that, I follow the recipe the same as hers. So here you are, breakfast sandwich. It is my absolute favorite. We had some pear sauce and a cup of tea with that. For dinner, we are having something we almost never have, spaghetti and meatballs. My husband's making the meatballs from fresh eggs and some ground pork from our son's pigs that he uh, raised last year. He added a few spices, some chopped onions, and an egg for binding, and you'll find this is a little bit, he's making this quite similar to the meatloaf recipe. It changes. It's never the same. He just kind of wings it. I'm adding some Parmesan cheese, and you'll see this is the last of the parm. So we're all done with parm for any recipe from here on out <laughs> to the end of February, <laughs> but... I want to show you a little tip I have for what to do when you finish off your parm. Now, don't throw away those lids. Those lids are so useful. The can is empty. I'm going to throw the bottom away, but the lid, if you look at the top, you have a shaker and you have a place where you can spoon things out. I like to use these for my spices and things. I have baking soda in here. It's easy. You scoop it out. I mean, it's the perfect little lid. So remember, save those. Don't throw them out. They fit perfectly on your mason jars. Now, once we added the Parmesan, the eggs, the seasonings, he also added some breadcrumbs, Italian-style breadcrumbs, and a little bit of ketchup. He's just going to mix all of that in and start to form some meatballs. These are great, not just for spaghetti, but you can make meatball grinders. You can put them in chop suey. We've done that before, just something fun. But I love them. I'm a sausage person, so I prefer sausage. A lot of the time he will mix it up and add, you know, some type of a burger put in there along with the sausage. Sometimes he'll add bacon, or if we don't have bacon, he will add bacon grease. That's another little tip, works great. This is the sauce that I'm making. Now, I'm making this from leftover sauce that I had in the freezer and just mixing it with canned tomatoes that we had canned from last year's garden. And this is a Pria lid. I love this tool. I found one on eBay for, guess what, $7. So I had to get it. It's the greatest tool. It does not bend, warp, chip, nick nothing. It doesn't do anything to your lids. I love it. It works fabulous. I'm so happy that I found this. Now let's get back to the sauce. I'm going to add 
a few seasonings, some onion powder, garlic powder, and I didn't have any Italian seasoning or none that I could find. So I'm going to add some basil, some oregano, just whatever seasonings you like to season your sauce with, they'll work fine. Just going to mix all of that around in there and get it all stirred up and just heat it up a little bit. Everything is cooked, so we don't need to do anything except heat it up. The meatballs are done. They look great. So we're going to plate everything. And tip, I cooked my spaghetti in the Instant Pot. It worked great. And the best part, it only took six minutes to cook. So we had all of this with some homemade brown bread. Everything was delicious. Saturday morning, January 15, and guess what? We had breakfast sandwiches and tea. <laughs> I'll try to change it up a little bit this week. Well, thank you for joining me in week two of the pantry challenge. Now, I'm learning a lot from this, and so far, and even though it's only the second week, I'm learning that this is really and truly the greatest way to find out what you need more of, what you need less of, and what you have deep down in your freezer. <laughs> I'm finding so many things I did not know that I put in there. So this has been great to kind of turn that over and get some use out of it. We don't want to waste anything. I mean, we take the time to grow this food and to you know, put it up and process it and whatever you do, whether it's canning or freezing. So, you know, use it, don't waste it. And if you're not going to use it, don't grow it or don't process it, don't freeze it, don't can it. I like to use exactly what we need for our family. I feel like that's the least amount of wasteful way that I can do it, if that makes sense. So I am really anxious to hear from you if you liked the way I did this video. It's completely different from last week. Um, I did add recipes, I added a couple of tips along the way, and I'd love to know and hear from you how well you liked this. Leave me a comment below. Is this the style of video that you like better than the first week? Or maybe is there something different that you would like me to do? I'd love to hear, so please let me know. Thank you for joining me today. I appreciate your time. I create two new videos every week on Simple Living, Homestead Grown, and All Things Home. So until next time. Mm -hmm.